Welcome back to NC Realtors Redefine, the NC Realtors podcast. On this episode from the Redefine Archives. But sometimes it's what you say and what you don't say. But the, the thing that was glaring to me in that study was how you talk about the school system. That's a big deal when it comes to housing because it says a lot about who lives in the neighborhood. Or apparently, we as realtors think it says a lot. But first... Do you have feedback on a story or topic that you'd like to hear covered on this podcast? Then give NC Realtors Redefine a call at 336-550-4437. When leaving your voicemail, be sure to tell us your name and where you're from. Your comments may be used on a future episode of NC Realtors Redefine. Sophia Chris. I'm a realtor in Greensboro, and I grew up in Long Island, and that's why I'm here today with my father to share our story with you. NC Realtors adopted a diversity and inclusion commitment statement to affirm the association and its members' commitment to diversity, fair housing, and equality. As realtors, we are legally and ethically bound to serve our clients without discrimination. Before you say that doesn't happen here, or that I've never witnessed discriminatory behavior in my many years of real estate, I'm here to tell you that unfortunately that's not true. It happens. Last year, there was a huge investigation in Long Island uncovering widespread evidence of unequal treatment by real estate agents. The investigation was a huge wake up call for NAR and realtors across the country. It also hit me pretty hard when I can listen to the, the study that was done in Long Island, it was very emotional for me because I heard the stories that my parents shared about their struggles in getting their home in Long Island. So, Daddy, thank you for being here. This is Nathaniel Silverthorne. So, Daddy, tell me um, where you moved from and why you moved to Long Island. I moved to New York, moved to Long Island for the school system. Breakneck was number 10 in the number 10 high schools in the country at the time. So very average jobs, but they wanted to do better for their children. So tell me what happened when you um, wanted to buy the house on Long Island. I wanted to buy the house on Long Island. It was a 33,000 30, 33, square, square foot house, four bedrooms. And um, when we uh, went to buy the house, I found out that they had a covenant not to sell to blacks. And we never saw the owner, but I guess some of the neighbors must have told him that we were black. And he changed things and wanted to, said some of his relatives wanted to buy. So I had to get a lawyer, take it to court and, get, and it went through the Human Rights Commission to get the house. And it drug on for about a month or two, I guess. So one of the practices that we see in discriminatory behavior in housing is a house gets put on the market and then once the neighbors or the owner finds out who wants to buy it, they change and say they want to sell it to somebody else. So that's pretty much what happened to you, correct? They couldn't tell by my name, word black or white, you couldn't tell. Right, so Silverthorne does not dictate what color you are. It's a shame that we live like that, that names dictate what you might look like. But because of my parents' name, the owners didn't know whether they were black or white. And the issue came up when they found out that they were black. So it's really interesting. So they were able to purchase that house, um, had to go to court, and so I have a really good friend with us today, Lowell Citron, who is my childhood neighbor and little brother. And so, Lowell, um, share with us what you know about the discrimination um, that was practiced in Great Neck at that time. Sure. So uh, the Silverthorns moved into Great Neck in the mid 60s. Um, and uh, like the Silverthorns, my parents uh, wanted to move to a house in Great Neck for the school system. Um, and at the time when they moved, uh, it was the late 60s, um, they couldn't afford the house. Um, and uh, they were looking around Great Neck um, for a house and they found a house, the house across the street from the Silverthorns was for sale, um, but it wasn't selling. Um, and so my parents waited, they made a bid on it, um, a very low bid, actually 60% of the market value because that's all they could afford. Um, and they got turned down originally. Um, and 
you know, they, they knew um, that there was a black family living across the street. Um, and uh, so six months went by and my parents didn't think they were going to get the house. And um, it turned out no one else wanted to buy the house because there was a black family living across the street. So they got a call six months after they made the original bid. Um, and they said, we're going to accept your bid um, because no one else wants to buy the house. Um, and my parents actually got the house because a black family lived across the street and no one else wanted to buy the house at the time. Before we move on to North Carolina, which is why I'm really here today, because I've been a realtor for 27 years in North Carolina. And there's a story here, too. The great thing is, is that Lowell moved across the street in the 60s, and we've been friends and like family ever since. We even celebrated holidays together. So the good thing is that they bought the house across the street and we're very much like family almost 40 years later. So what I want to share with 50 North Carolina, years later, 50 years later, I said 40 because I'm trying to stay young. <laughs> <But> anyway, <laughs> My parents bought the house in 1969. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. But um, what I want to share about North Carolina and why it's very important to me to share this with you all is because the same similar things happen to my parents here. So the house I'm sitting in now is the house that my parents bought in 1984. 84. 84. Since then, my husband and I have purchased it. But share with them what happened when you came to North Carolina in Summerfield and bought this house. The house was on sale for $158,000. The bank approved us for $150,000. The owner said he would finance the balance. When they went to closing, again, name. he never seen us before by name. He said he wouldn't do it. But before we had left New York, we had taken out an overdraft account to sent it back for fifteen thousand for fifteen thousand dollars. So it didn't matter; we got the money anyway. But once again, at the closing table, things changed because they saw the color of your skin. And so, shortly after that, you made another purchase in Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge. So, what happened there? This wasn't quite as bad in Oak Ridge. Our our uh, real estate salesman was black, and the people that the salesman that was selling it to us was white. And she said that uh, seven white people being there to buy this house. So who are these people? Again, name. They didn't know who we were. Kept around with a black. The thing we're trying to share with you is that sometimes you're discriminating and you don't know it. But sometimes you're discriminating and you do know it. And so I really encourage you all to really look at that Long Island Divided um, study. One behavior that was glaring to me from the Long Island study was the discussion about schools. Your discussion about schools says a lot about the neighborhood, a lot about the neighborhood. And then um, in the study that people that didn't even have children that would share stuff about schools with one couple, but wouldn't share anything about the schools with another or talk about crime and then not talk about crime. And sometimes it's what you say and what you don't say. But the, the thing that was glaring to me in that study was how you talk about the school system. That's a big deal when it comes to housing because it says a lot about who lives in the neighborhood or apparently we as realtors think it says a lot and here in North Carolina here in Guilford County you know we talk about the Northwest school system all the time you know the reality about school is the school is as good as you make it you know and your parenting style and your student level of engagement with the school is what makes the school so this discussion about schools and neighborhoods I think is discriminatory depending on how you phrase your comments would you agree, Lowell? Yeah, uh, yes, I would. Um, very much so. Um, that's one thing. And another thing I, I think that maybe is unintended, maybe, is, you know, these realtors are making assumptions about where people will feel most comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they're making it the assumption they're going to feel most comfortable if they're in a neighborhood with people who look like they do. Um, and, you know, I don't think that's an assumption for a realtor to make. Um, you know, people move into a neighborhood for certain reasons. Um, and it, it might have nothing to, you know, it has nothing to do a lot of times with, you know, what race they are. That's a very good point. We do make assumptions, you know, and it's unfortunate. You know, I think the call to action here is, 
to share with your buyers as a realtor up front what you're going to do for them. You're going to show them what they're looking for based on what they say they want in a home. And when you do your MLS search, wherever the home pops up is where it pops up. And don't weed out houses because of what you think. You know, one of the things that was great about my childhood is that I grew up around people that didn't necessarily look like me. You know, we were very multicultural in our approach and my parents wanted to make sure that we were comfortable around all kinds of people. And Lowell's family was the same way. And I think the reason why we are the way we are is because we grew up near each other and we did have things that were different about us, but yet we're all people. And once again, Lowell, you don't make an assumption about where people want to live based on what they look like. Exactly. Anything else to add, Lowell? Um, you know, back to Long Island, I, I mean, just, it, you know, as Sophia was, you know, referring to the Newsday uh, study, and it, and it was a very comprehensive study. And like Sophia said, you should all take a look at it. Um, you know, it's apparent to me, I, I've lived on Long Island most of my life. Um, and there is definitely um, racial discrimination in the housing market. I, I see it in different neighborhoods. I'm very involved in different um, organizations here on Long Island. And I see that certain groups are pushed to certain neighborhoods and it's, it's by design. Um, and, you know, Newsday certainly did a very good job to expose that. And hopefully this practice, uh, you know, this trend will change. Will change because we're intentional. And I want to share something um, that I think Brian Green shared yesterday in another fair housing event. If you are either you're intentionally aware or you're unintentionally clueless. And I thought that was very profound because you need to be, you're one or the other. You're one or the other. And let's hopefully all turn into intentionally aware. All right. So thank you all. Please look at Long Island Divided. We'll send you some resources and some several resources um, along with this. And thank you, Lowell, for being here with us today. And thank you, Dan. Good seeing you, Lowell. Great to see you. Okay. To read NC Realtors' diversity and inclusion commitment statement, and to find resources and tools to help realtor members and associations learn more about fair housing, visit ncrealtors.org slash fair housing. Be sure to catch up on every episode of NC Realtors Redefine by subscribing to our podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or SoundCloud.